Another Bengals moment with Mo Egger. All right, welcome into another Bengals moment on ESPN1530.com and, of course, 700WLW.com. The Bengals have made it two in a row. They're coming off a win over the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday, 30-20. to 20, And the orange and black now 3-2. and two. It is, as it is every week, four down territory. There's a simple fundamental difference between bad teams and good teams. Bad teams lose because of, winning teams win in spite of. There's many reasons you could argue the Bengals could have and you might argue should have lost against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the defense came out shaky, gave up a touchdown on the game's opening drive. The offensive play calling was kind of questionable. The special teams, eh, Mike Nugent, a missed extra point. That did not come back and haunt them. Plus, they got some poor kickoff returns and the Bengals couldn't get their bread and butter. Cedric Benson never really got going on Sunday. This offense was stagnant for a while and they faced yet another fourth quarter deficit. And yet the Bengals won in Jacksonville. Now, I don't know that this means that the Bengals are good. I do know that their record is, though. They're 3-2. and two. That works. I know that this team through five games has shown an ability to overcome adversity, overcome themselves. So far, this team has done that. And because of that, even though the Bengals might not necessarily fit the bill or the description of a good team, their record certainly does. That's really all that matters. All right, many of you have got to stop hammering away at the Bengals' schedule and their lack of quality wins. Although I have to point out, the Buffalo Bills are 4-1, and one, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, the great thing about the NFL and the great thing about pro sports is strength of schedule and who you play, all that stuff doesn't matter. The league tells you who to play. Your job is to beat them. There's no selection committee to impress. There's no voters to win over. All you've got to do is compile more wins than most everybody else. So far, the Bengals have kind of done that. Doesn't matter who they play. This isn't college basketball. There's no RPI, no strength of schedule. So stop worrying about that. Many teams in the NFL, including the Bengals, have had successful seasons in part because they played easy schedules. The Bengals winning record has as much value as anyone else's, even though the other teams might have played tougher opponents. Hooray for Hubes! In 2009, the Bengals took Kevin Huber, a punter, out of the University of Cincinnati and McNick High School in the fifth round of the NFL draft. And because Huber is a punter, a lot of people laughed at the Bengals. I've got to ask, who's laughing now? On a team that's playing in a lot of close games where special teams play and hidden yardage are vital, Kevin Huber has been outstanding. There's no denying it. He has 32 punts this season, 10 inside the 20. That's second best in the league. And most important, his kicks are coverable. Eight of the 32 have been down by the Bengals. Also, second best in the league. And 12 have been returned, but for only a grand total of 80 yards. That's good coverage, that's good kicking, and at least in terms of their fifth round draft choice in the 2009 draft, that's some pretty good drafting. All right, up next is a game on Sunday at Paul Brown Stadium against the 0-5 Indianapolis Colts. To say they are struggling would be a little bit of an understatement, but their last three games have been close. A loss at the gun on a field goal to the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were beaten on Monday Night Football by a touchdown, lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and this past Sunday blew a fourth quarter lead and lost by four at home to the Kansas City Chiefs. Frankly, been rooting for the Colts to win because nothing would be worse than an 0-5 Indy team handing you a loss heading into your bye week. This is must-win territory for the Bengals. At home, the Bengals, for one of the only times this season, a clear-cut favorite. Cincinnati's off to a good start, 3-2. and two. We'll take that. But the good vibes of the first five weeks go away almost instantly if they lay an egg against Indy. And I think this game's actually going to be pretty close. We'll see, though, if the Bengals pass an important test. Can they win in their first game this year where they hands down should win? Remains to be seen. Looking forward to talking about it next week. Email me your thoughts, mo at ESPN1530.com, or if you're on the Twitter, at MoEgger1530. We'll talk to you next week, and what the hell? Hootay!